Hello, Robocon India participants. This is Prasanna Deshpande from MathWorks. Welcome to the first YouTube live session on Robocon India. Uh, we have a stellar guest panel today, and uh, we have a packed agenda as well. Let me get you introduced to the guest panel. We have a celebrity student guest. He is a research scholar. Uh, he's working in the area of robotics. He has extensive experience of using MATLAB and Simulink for robotics applications. He has been winner of Simulink Student Challenge 2015 and Simulink Hardware Challenge 2016 back to back. He has gone through the Robocon Challenge for 2017 and he's ready to share his views, his comments and his guidance with the participating teams. Please help me welcome Veer Alakshendra from VNIT Nagpur. Okay. Thank you, Prasanna. I'm very happy that you invited me to join this uh, Hangout. I'm looking forward for this competition as this is a uh, very challenging compared to the last years. Thank you very much. Yeah, and our next guest is the driving force behind Robocon India. Along with his team, he has been organizing Robocon for over a decade now. He is a professor in mechanical engineering and director at MIT Academy of Engineering, R&D Pune. Please help me welcome Dr. Yogesh Bhalerao from MIT. Yeah, hello, Prasanna, and um, uh, thank you very much for calling me for uh, this particular uh, hangout. Uh, so we are organizing Robocon from 2005. Uh, we had participation of five teams at that time uh, in Pune, and today uh, we are planning to organize uh, 2017. We are hoping at least 125 teams will be participating this year. I'm very happy to share at this moment that MIT Pune in association with Doordarshan has already we have organized two international events in 2008 and uh, 2014 and we already got the bid of 2020 so we'll be again organizing the international Robocon 2020 so that is our plan and that is how MIT is taking this Robocon initiative along with Doordarshan uh, in India. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I would like to kick off the session with with you, uh, with your input only. Now, you have been organizing Robocon since it was a 16 team competition to now a over 100 plus team competition. Sir, what's the what's your behind the scene perspective? What's your vision for Robocon India? Yes, uh, basically, uh, we are uh, not any organization uh, which will uh, which is organizing the various events. We we are not the event management company. Basically, we are the uh, educational institute. MIT Pune is a well-known engineering uh, institute, uh, yeah, not only in Pune but uh, across the world. And uh, uh, when in 2005, Doordarshan uh, approached us that uh, this is the event of Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union and uh, Doordarshan is the member of this ABU and uh, all the member uh, countries and the uh, broadcaster, public broadcasters, they host this particular event, uh, Robocon, in their uh, own uh, countries. That is the national event. An international event is uh, uh, organized in different countries every year and the theme is different every year. So we thought this is the best platform for engineering students uh, to build a robot and to participate and get the knowledge. We know that uh, the next decade is of robotics and uh, that's why we thought uh, we, we can uh, go ahead with this event. And that was the main motto behind that to give the robotics education uh, to the young students of India and uh, to take this mission ahead of robotics so that they will be leading tomorrow in the robotics and technology. So you have been witnessing Robocon India as well as international Robocon uh, for a number of years now. Uh, now, what are some of the strengths or weaknesses of Indian teams? Or, or what should Indian teams do so that uh, an Indian team wins international Robocon? Yeah, uh, I, I actually I had a fortune that uh, since 2008, I have witnessed every international event. Uh, uh, which was uh, he held in various countries. In fact, uh, the very recent event held in Bangkok in August uh, 2016. I have seen that uh, national winners like MIT Pune, Nirma Institute, uh, some IITs, uh, they have represented India uh, in international event. What I have seen is that uh, in compared to other countries, uh, which were the uh, which are the winners of international uh, event, like uh, mainly uh, Vietnam, Thailand, China, Japan and uh, this year's uh, 
winner is Malaysia. So all these countries and their national winning team who have won the international event, I think where we are lagging is the main two things. Our robots are uh, less accurate and less reliable. So what is the key in uh, basically for success in international event is accuracy and reliability. I have seen, uh, I, I keep on interacting with Indian team. I keep on interacting with others also. I think accuracy, reliability, and one more thing, which is recently is uh, coming up is the speed of the machine. Because if you see this year, uh, the winner team is Malaysia and our Indian national winner, they bet Malaysia in first match. And afterwards in quarter match, they lost to Malaysia. Now, wh why this has happened? Now, both the teams have completed the final task, but the uh, Malaysian team, they have completed a task yeah, in, uh, in less time. So they were, their robots were faster. So at international level, other than speed and accuracy, uh, we, we require uh, speed, accuracy, and reliability. Our robots are not reliable. That is what is my observation in last few years. I think our Indian national teams, they should concentrate on reliability, speed, and accuracy. If these three things are achieved, I think uh, our robots can also compete at the international level and they can even beat uh, the international teams. And I hope that in coming two to three years, in fact, in 2020, we will like to see uh, Indian team uh, winning the international event in Pune. Thank you, sir. I agree with your vision. In 2020, we should have international winner from, from India. Um, uh, sir, finally, uh, what's your take on this year's team? Yes, uh, this year's team is uh, very complex. If you see, uh, into uh, since 2005, every year, because I'm also in uh, interacting with a lot of technical people whenever we are we are in process of making different themes also, and I keep on interacting. Every year, uh, the challenge is little complex. So from from last. A few years every year the idea is that something new is to be added so that technology challenge will be there for the engineering students uh, who are participating in uh, robocon so this year's uh, theme is also again a complex theme where we have to throw the frisbees and, and there, there is a lot of accuracy is required for landing and coordination is required so certainly the theme is complex and uh, uh, it's interesting also because uh, see, uh, please understand Robocon event is of the broadcasters and when these broadcasters, even though the theme is uh, prepared by the faculties or teachers, but uh, the broadcasters are also involved and they keep on giving their inputs about the viewers because even if we make the theme, it should be uh, a good viewing uh, experience also for the viewers. I think this year's theme is perfectly matching in that. It is a technical challenge for the uh, participants and it is also a challenge for the viewers. So I think this year's theme is very interesting and I'm actually looking for it uh, so uh, for a good competition. And I think there are a lot of uh, challenges which students have to overcome. And I'm very thankful here for Matt. MATLAB simulating this type of uh, softwares and their trainings to the students uh, will certainly help the participating teams to perform better and to win not only national but even international events because such type of support is required and I'm uh, very uh, on this platform I'm very thankful to MathWorks because they are con consistently from last few years uh, supporting this Robocon event and they are almost now integral part of this Robocon and I'm very thankful to them also and I hope that such type of uh, softwares and uh, will certainly uh, contribute to improve the accuracy and reliability of the robots uh, which is uh, ultimately the uh, winning uh, will happen. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, your support. Uh, and uh, let's get started with our next section, which is the real technical section. Uh, let's uh, understand the theme for Robocon. Basically, in this year's challenge, you have seven spots, seven pillars to be called as spots. Then you have 50 disks and three minutes. All you have to do is within those three minutes, you have to throw your disks onto the spots. Uh, you have to remove the uh, you have to remove the balls. You have to stack your spots onto the disk uh, onto the uh, stack your disk onto the spot i'm sorry and if possible uh, knock off your opponent's uh, disk from the spot as well for winning you have to uh, stack at least one disk on each and every spot uh, if that is called as appare if you cannot do that uh, then you have to stack as many disks as possible on various spots so that you earn maximum points yeah uh, yeah personal analysis really exciting 
So yeah. I guess uh, you have worked with a uh, lot of uh, industry people and even academics people. So I would like to know how would you approach this problem this time? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, basically I am working with industry as well as academia. So I would like to apply a methodical approach to this kind of problem. Uh, so basically let's go in phases. Uh, these phases are quite simple. Uh, it's basically requirements, design and implementation. While we are following these three phases, we have to keep on testing the system. That's the way it should work. Now, um, what are the components in this kind of uh, in, in this theme? Uh, I guess there are only two main components. One is the disk throwing mechanism, and the second one is the computer vision system. Along with these comp two components, what is really important for the competition uh, to be successful is the third thing, which is uh, the hardware implementation of all the designs of all the algorithms that we are doing. Um, so if I get into uh, details of uh, first component, which is basically a disk throwing mechanism. Uh, see, there are three use cases for disk throwing mechanism. Uh, it's basically it needs to throw a disk in order to knock off the ball. It needs to throw the disk for stacking up onto the spot and it needs to throw a disk for striking off another disk. So if, if I look for these three uh, use cases, uh, in order to understand requirements in a better fashion, I need to do some computation and experimentation with the system. So what I mean by computation is basically understand the physics of the system. Now, by now, uh, everybody must have figured out the physics behind this theme is basically projectile motion. For this projectile motion, what we need to do is uh, we need to calculate initial velocity and angle with which the disk needs to be thrown. Let me quickly share my screen here and uh, let me quickly show you uh, an app that we have developed. So this is the app I, I, I would like to show you. And uh, see, now this app takes uh, tower height, tower distance, angle of landing, and height of robo as input parameters. And it gives initial velocity and angle as output parameters. So I mean, this is a very simple uh, calculation developed using MATLAB. So we have shared this app as well as the code onto our blog series as a part of second blog. So basically, what this will help you is this will help you to do initial computation of initial velocity and angle. Uh, now this will be very useful uh, because and why angle of landing is that's an interesting thing because angle of landing more the angle of landing is going to be easier probably to land the disk we basically as far as experimentation is concerned we basically need to understand how the disk behaves with these input values so prototyping will basically help you to understand the effect of these values onto the disk whether it lands onto the spot or it falls off or or whether it does what it is supposed to do uh, so I think Veer, uh, in your project uh, related to mechanism wheels, uh, you must have tried uh, this prototyping. Uh, would you like to share your experience at this point of time? Uh, yeah, actually we have uh, for the prototype, there are many ways. For example, you can go for the experiments. Uh, so if you go for the physical prototype, the problem is you'll be designing it and then testing, then doing the iterations. And you have some problem, then again you have to change the designs and then again do the experiments. So what we did, or I what, what I suggest is, we can better build a simulation model in a simulating environment and do as many design uh, and as many experiments as we want. Yeah. So thanks, Veer. Uh, <clears throat> so I mean, I, I I really appreciate your point. Uh, so I mean, uh, I'd like to emphasize on this point of virtual prototype. Actually, I mean, physical prototype is one thing, but even before you go for physical prototype, you need to create a virtual prototype of your system. And uh, what we have done here is we have built a very frugal setup, a very frugal experimental setup uh, with uh, one of our tools, Simscape Multibody. Uh, let me quickly show you the setup that uh, I'm talking about. Uh, let me quickly share my screen again. So my this is the setup that we have built along with uh, uh, along with multibody uh, Simscape multibody and what it does is it basically calculates the the disk angle and height and initial velocity and it tries to throw the ball so in this case I, I am I, I've been able to you know displace the ball from the disk 
yeah so this in this model the disk actually ends up it actually lands onto the spot but then again it goes off so i still need to do some kind of work in order to get it successful uh, so basically this kind of experimentation uh, should help you uh, to see the effect of initial velocity and angle with the system you can mathematically model other things like you can mathematically model aerodynamics of the disk using simulink and give them as an input to this model and make this simulation more realistic once you have refined your simulation model you basically get the requirements for your disk throwing system or requirements for your disk throwing actuator now these requirements should help you to design your system now the next step how do you design your system uh, what our experience with robocon what it says is uh, basically a uh, lot of pneumatic actuation systems are used you guys use a lot of pneumatic uh, pumps and a lot of things and then basically pneumatic actuation systems so what i would like to show you here very quickly is uh, these kind of pneumatic actuation systems or my personal uh, guess this time is uh, what will be really popular here this year is uh, electromechanical systems in terms of designing your actuators so how do you design these different kinds of systems is the question and i would like to take your attention to these few libraries so basically this is where i am talking about our tool simscape now simscape is a physical modeling tool it helps you model systems based on physical topology and uh, it has library for various domains now one of the libraries is electrical which helps you to model electrical system you can interface your electrical elements with your mechanical elements there is also gas domain which will help you to model uh, pneumatic systems basically you can model design these different actuators you can compare their performance you can compare their performance with your requirement which we have just shown in the simscape multi-body based model so simscape will help you to uh, interface these different actuators like pneumatic actuator electromechanical actuator with your uh, with your uh, final model and that's a great tool for designing or design trade off studies uh, veer i think you have used uh, simscape multibody also extensively for your for the for the simulink student challenge yeah, yeah sure, sure i'll uh, put up uh, my this one one model I, i'll be sharing on this sure so uh, and give you, I can give you one example. As you said about the pneumatic systems as well as the mechanisms, and all, definitely it will be an electromechanical system most probably. So this is just a, a small model we have created. It is just a, it looks same as the arena uh, for the Robocon 2017. So you can see we have a mobile robot and the mechanism which you have showed. So if you mount over this, so uh, the Simulink is useful. For example, there are different pillars. So it will give you the exact uh, means type of actuators or how much pressure is needed at uh, each pneumatic system. So that can be calculated using this same uh, calculation. Thank you. I mean, uh, I, I like the arena that you have built using uh, Simscape multibody. And I'm sure that's not a very difficult task. Yeah. 